from the SR Academy here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Nice to see you. Um, I'd like to introduce Colton. Colton is one of my students here in the SR Academy. And he's going to be taking questions. And um, if you would like to send me any messages or ask me anything, please feel free to. And Colton will share them with you, with me, rather. So this morning, what I'm doing is uh, my model, Jaden, has so much hair. And I know that we all have clients like this. She has a really great amount of hair, uh, a thick density. So what I'm doing is I'm really using the idea of disconnection to create some space, to remove some weight and to create some texture. So what I've done is I've just put a little triangle in the top. My triangle comes underneath the swirl of her crown. So I can encompass the crown difficulties later on and disconnect that top area. She also has a lot of density in the back. So I have sectioned off and I've sectioned off in a specific place. It's just above the occipital bone. And the reason that I've done that is so that I can take some weight out from the protrusion of the occipital bone. Her occipital bone is very prominent. So I went above and now I'm working in an angle. I'm working in a layer. And the angle of the layer is going to allow me to collapse this hair. This hair on the top is then going to fall over and disconnect. So this is generally referred to as panel layering. And this is extremely useful when you are working with people with denser hair, thicker hair, curly hair. Um, I use it a lot on wavy and curly hair because I like to create some space between the layers and I like to also remove some density without necessarily just relying on freehand at the end. So I remove some weight because of the angle, because of this angle through here, when this hair falls down, it will collapse. If my angle comes out and I did a flat layer, for example, when this hair comes over it, it will make it stick out and push out. So I actually went above the occipital bone on purpose to remove more density of weight over the protrusion of the occipital bone. So I'm working with a layer. I'm actually allowing my fingers to come out on purpose because I'm quite into raw, loose edges at the moment. But who knows what I want to do. I might decide to uh, keep the outline raw and free. I might also decide to put in a strong outline later on. So I like to keep options. You can see this side and you can see this side that I haven't done yet. So each section is coming back to the previous section. Because of the nature of the angle, the angle is very extreme. So I am working palm to palm. If this hair was longer, I would probably work over my fingers. But because the hair is shorter, the palm to palm is helping me better. Making sure I'm tilting my fingertips in and bringing my knuckle up. So it's this action through here. The palm of my hand is coming up and my fingertip is going in. My guide is from the previous section. Make sure you can see your guideline. And I'm cutting top, middle, bottom, bringing the fingers out at the ends of the hair to leave some fringe and decide my outlines later. So good morning everyone. It might be afternoon or evening, wherever you are. But hello to everyone. Again, my name is Sally Rogerson. I have a company called SR Education, and we specialize in advanced training and teacher training. But I also have an academy here in Scottsdale 
and that's where we are now at the SR Academy and we actually teach a cosmetology license. We teach the 1000 hour license in Arizona which is hair only so it's like cosmetology but without the nails and the skin. So that's where we are now. My wonderful students are on week 13 and they're doing full head foils today so it's been an amazing morning already. I hope you're all having a great day as well. When I cross check this, I'm going to lift up and lift up high to clean it. I have to lift it up high because my angle is that way, short to long. So I have to lift up. If I cross check it like this, I'll be coming down and I'll be making marks on the head. How's everyone doing, Colton? Everyone's doing well. We have lots of friends from oh, cool. all over the world, it looks like. We have some people in New York. I think I saw uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. I can't wait till we can travel again, everyone. That would be amazing to uh, get out there and see the world again, but... We had a question from yes. Diane McKee. She wants to know what length it is at the occipital. Oh, very nice question. Thank you, Diane. Um, the length of it is here. I don't know, what's that? An inch and a half? Yeah, it's yeah. I, I work in centimeters, so... <laughs> <laughs> like an inch and a half. Now, to be honest with you, to, to be able to get um, and to be able to decide the length that you are going to cut it, you have to kind of work with the hair. So sometimes I'll do a test length and I'll go like here. Now, if the hair still puffs out, you know that when you lay this hair down over the top, if this hair is puffing out, it's going to make it stick out more. And I'm, and my attempt um, on this haircut is to slim the hair down and to create more of a, a flatness there, ready for this to be able to fall over the top. I'll show you what I mean now. But I do this haircut longer. I do this on long hair all day long and I do it a lot longer. So you'll choose your length yourself depending on your end result choice i have to say to you though that that guide underneath is not your end result on the surface this panel here panel two is now going to be cut at a different length and it's going to lay down over the top so let's talk about that we have one question yes. sally um they're wanting to know, uh, they missed the beginning, they're wanting to know the difference between palm up cutting compared yes. to over fingers. Very good. So let's just, uh, we have a great question. So sometimes I'll cut palm to palm, which basically means my palm faces my palm. Sometimes I'll cut over my fingers. In general, um, in the SR education program, then uh, palm to palm cutting we normally use with graduation and a line because it generally makes your hands come down. Normally I would layer over my fingers because when you cut over your fingers you lift hair up and layering essentially removes weight. So in this case because of the angle and because of the length of the hair I'm cutting it palm to palm. Normally with my SR rules I would be cutting it over the fingers but the head gets in the way so I can't get in there. So an advanced cutting technique in disconnection is to be able to just change your fingers depending on what your needs are. Great question, thank you so much. I hope that answered it for you. I would consider this going more into salon creative work. And with salon creative work, your classic hand and body position rules don't always apply. So, Let's talk about that now. I can't find my rest. Okay, sorry guys. All right, so I'm now actually gonna go over my fingers on purpose. So I'll show you my second panel. So my second panel here is gonna be longer and it's going to fall over my first panel. Ultimately, the difference between this hair here and the short hair and this hair here in the second area the length that you choose for this to be disconnected by 
the more extreme, the further apart it is, the more obvious the end result is going to be. It's as simple as that. So if I want this to blend in and be quite salon friendly, I'm going to choose a length that falls down what we call inside of the hair cut. So if I choose something that falls below this length, but in the middle here, but it's still falling inside and not on the outside, then it's going to be more easy to wear and it's going to be more commercial. So generally we tend to do that a bit more with our salon work. Um, if you go more extreme and your length stays completely longer, then it's going to look more extreme, it's harder to wear, and you're only going to have certain clients that are going to want to do that. So, let's talk about the length. I'm going to have it fall in here. Also, the angle. So, I can go to here. That would create, again, that short to long collapsible angle. If I come out to here like a flat layer, when it falls down, it will poof out and you might get like a ledge. So, my angle needs to blend in. If you want it extreme, then you could go over the top and go short to long. So really you're thinking, who is this client? What do I want to achieve for them? What's their general look? So I'm going to do that, lay that hair over the top, and then I can start to see how it's going to be. You can see I have a big disconnection. I've left that quite big because I'm going to see how the hair is. Is that coarse, strong hair? So I have to kind of talk to it and help it along a little bit. I put a, a touch of leave-in conditioner in as well, which is by Formula 18. That will soften the hair. Now I'm going to go back to the previous section, find my angle, and you can see now I'm cutting over my fingers, which is what you know, I really wanted to do in the first place in the lower area, but I couldn't get my hands in because the hair was too short. Hi, Stephen. Stephen Thatland. Oh, cool. Hi, Stephen. Hi, anyone that's joined in. I know you are all busy working hard, so I appreciate you. If you're watching this afterwards, then uh, thank you for joining us as well. This is a salon disconnected haircut. I would refer to this as panel layering. Panel layering to me is an opportunity to create texture, to remove weight and density and allow you to get a slimmer, more textured feeling. You can see how that's blending in a little bit more now in the bottom and you know you've just got to kind of work with the texture and see what's going on. I'm walking around and I'm now going back to the previous with vertical sections. So I'm taking enough hair to see my guideline but I'm also making sure that I'm traveling. Working the hair as I go along, seeing how it's laying in through there. My glasses are steaming up. I'm sure you all have the same issues. <laughs> we have a couple of people asking why you're using ver uh, vertical sectioning for instead of pivoting. Very good, so great question. Uh, why am I using vertical sections instead of pivoting? Uh, vertical sections remove weight and I want to remove weight all the way around here because this is the densest, thickest area that she has. If I pivot through there, I'm going to be pushing the hair in the direction of the section so it will start to push it forward quickly, which I don't want. I want it to fall down so the hair is falling straight down, which makes this slimmer. But yeah, you can pivot if you want to. I would pivot if I had finer hair. Vertical sections remove weight. So I want the most weight removal possible because she has that density. Great question, thank you. 
if there is any more, you're welcome to ask me. I'm just going through. So this is my second panel. I have my length still through here, and you can see I still have my disconnection through there. This is just the raw shape. I'll freehand into it, I'll work into it more. I just want to get the hair off to start with. Now we get to the mastoid process, and what you're thinking to yourself is, do I need to bring this hair back? Am I trying to leave weight or length at that front area? So this is my decision now. How much over direction am I going to use? For me, I want shorter hair. I don't mind having some outline length to play around with afterwards, but I am not going to over direct a lot. I'm going to continue through with vertical sections and I'm going to allow the natural hairline to come through. We have a question about your guide. She yes. wants to know if you're using a traveling guide. Yes, traveling guide. Everything goes back to the previous. So three goes back to two, four goes back to three, five goes back to four. And that's what we would refer to as a traveling guide. So it's moving forwards. My feet are also moving forwards. So I'm not moving over the camera, but I'm moving my weight forwards. I don't want to over direct right back to behind the ear. It will be too much weight. I want to come back to the previous section only. So that is what we would refer to as a traveling guide. Great question, thank you for your question. You could have no over direction as well. Obviously we're seeing a lot of really cool fashion mullets and shags and stuff. So if you wanted to go more extreme, you could just bring the hair out from its natural position, which would be called on base, right? It sounds like I'm going to start fencing or something. On the base. On the base. Stephen Statman said the place looks great. Oh, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. This is our uh, small boutique academy in Scottsdale. We only take six students in our classes. So um, it's amazing how well they do when you have so much attention in a cosmetology program. And obviously I'm really enjoying it. This is my dream. I've been trying to get to this point in my career for a number of years. We just got open in July. Hope to see you soon, Stephen, when it's all good for you to come. We have a lot of classes still. We're still doing advanced classes, teacher training, we do foundation, creative we've got coming up in December. We do have people traveling, we're very careful about being safe and looking after everyone. Six week. Yes, we have the six week starting as well. So if you feel like you need six weeks of hair cutting, maybe you're a colorist or maybe you're just getting back into it or you just left school, that starts on November the 1st and 2nd. People come to us for six weeks from all over the place. Beautiful weather right now. I'm really selling it now, aren't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, other side, other side. I'm gonna turn my body position around. Whenever I can turn my body position around, I do. Sometimes it's not possible if the angle is super extreme, then I can't. I'm still gonna go over my fingers and I'm mimicking, I'm mimicking the angle from the other side. So this side, you can see I'm actually going bottom up but if you prefer and of course you could still work top down if the angle was too extreme for you to get that in your fingers we have a new person who joins who's asking again um, why you do the panel section yes very good so why did I do the panel sections I've split this head into three panels I've got the underneath area which you can see under here and then this is my second panel this is my top panel. This is for uh, a client. I'm gonna to go to the other side because it's easier for the camera angle, guys. So I'm gonna stay here so I can still keep showing you my angle. Um, what was the question, Colton, sorry? The panels. Oh yes, sorry. The um, panels are 
split into three so that we can disconnect. So this demonstration is about disconnection. When to use disconnection, what is disconnection? Let's talk about that as well. But these three panels allow me to create different lengths within a haircut. This will allow me to remove weight and also create texture and create a negative space basically. This hair here has been removed, this hair falls over the top. We're looking for it to just fall in quite seamlessly. That's our intention. Uh, if you have a more extreme client or you want to do something that looks more extreme, then you can disconnect way more than this. I'm doing what I would refer to as more of a salon disconnection, where everything falls inside the haircut. So the panels are so that I can create different lengths in different areas with the hope that visually it will all blend in at the end. This is something we cover a lot in our creative class. But disconnection basically means an area that does not connect through the use of a guideline. Classic haircuts generally all connect. More creative and salon advanced haircuts, you can start to add disconnection. We think of disconnection as being our false technique. So line, graduation and layering. Our fourth technique is disconnection and this allows you to play in a creative way, but still precision. So this haircut, because I'm still cutting it with precision, even though I'm removing weight, it will still grow out really well and have all the properties of a classic haircut and just cutting it differently. We have a couple of new questions. Yes. And we have one from Tracy that uh, says, what is meant by inside the haircut? Okay, great, great question. What is meant by inside the haircut? So when this disconnection here falls down, it falls still inside of the haircut. It doesn't fall over the outline. So when the disconnections fall in the inside of the haircut and they don't fall over the outline, they are still very easy to wear because they blend in and still look very commercial and you're not left with some crazy weird long pieces hanging over which I don't mind but you know the lady at the bank might just think you've lost your mind and you've forgotten how to cut those bits of hair do you know what I mean so if you put disconnection on the wrong client sometimes they won't get it and also they might just think you've made a mistake. So you've got to make the right fit for the client. If I'm using disconnection that falls over the top of the outline, I will see it more, and that's when you'll have more extreme disconnection, which again, you've got to put on the right person. What was the other question, Colton? The other question is, could you do this haircut with fingertips out to inward? Yes, great question. Could you do your fingertips out to inward? You can, but the angle is very awkward. Um, I do normally do it. I'll stand here and show you. I'm standing on the other side so that we can yeah. film better. Um, so yes, you can go this way. But remember, when you come in here, you're gonna cut into your length more. So just be careful when you come in that way. So sometimes if I've got an angle like that, I prefer to be here. Because if I decide I want more length in my outline, I just lift my knuckle up. So I have more choice going this way. But yes, of course you can do it the other way. But in my experience, people tend to cut some of that length off and make mistakes. Depends on how extreme your angle is. We have one more question yeah. that just came in. Um, they're wanting to know if this cut only works on thick hair. Could you do it on thin hair? How does it lay? Great question. Would it work on thin hair? Does it only work on thick hair? My experience, um, I prefer to do it on medium density to thick density. It works on all textures. I use this all day long on curly hair. It's really good on clients that have multi-textured hair as well. And I do it on very long hair. Um, to, to me personally, I don't really do it on fine hair because the whole point of this haircut is to remove density and a lot of weight. 
which generally a final client doesn't want. I would still do this, but I would do it with two panels instead of three. Right, the three panels is gonna take more weight out. I even do this haircut with up to like 10 panels. Do you know what I mean? So if I've got someone with the hair of 10 men, I can do it. one, two, three, four, five, six. you know, I can do it all the way up to create many little loose disconnections. So that works really good as well. Just gonna do a little cross checking. Um, how's everyone doing out there? Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, if I've met you before, then hello. Uh, my name is Sally Rogerson and I have a company called SR Education. I used to be the Senior Creative Director for Vidal Sassoon in uh, the Academy in LA, so I might have met some of you there. I now am here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and this is our academy that we work out from. It's just a small boutique academy. We do a lot of photography and video here as well. So come visit with us whenever you feel comfortable. All right, so I'm taking down this top area now. So just to recap, if you've just joined, three panels of layering. First panel went up to, you can see it, it went to above the occipital bone, first panel. I went on a layer that collapsed, so it was shorter on the interior, longer on the exterior. Then I left my next panel down, and I did the same thing, but with a new guideline. So you can see my disconnection now between here and here. Um, so that lays down. And the idea of this haircut to me is to try and make this disconnection area quite seamless. Not to be obvious, but you can do it more obviously if you want to. Now I'm putting down my triangle. So, so many ways you can cut this. You can come through short to long. You can channel it. Um, you can do a fringe, you know, I mean, there's a million things you can do on the top area. What I'm going to do here is actually work with some channels and work short to long. I'm also going to look at the hair and see which way it falls best. So this way you can see has a strong spring. This way kind of falls a little bit better. You can also look if there's a strong parting or anything like that. So uh, what I'm going to do here is go through with some sections that will pivot from this point. So I'm going to pivot from the crown area here. So I'll be pivoting around. And just very, very simply working on some nice channeling. The reason I'm going to work on channeling on the top is because we still have another thick dense amount of hair. She has great hair to work with. So I'm actually going to channel it. Let's talk about what channeling is and what it means. Channeling, you know, came through originally in the 70s in more of a veil technique and then became very popular in more of the 80s. And it's basically where I take uh, one section of hair and cut it maybe shorter, then the next one is longer, the next one is shorter. I can play around with different angles, I can leave some out. It's a technical precision way of removing weight. So here I go, this is my first one. My guide is here from the crown. I'm not going to connect to the sides and I'm just making this up. I'm just going from shorter to longer. How long I go in the front is dependent on how much length uh, I want to keep for the client. So you're designing that, that's up to you. I'm doing this in the air as a layer because I want to remove weight. So that's my first section. It falls over the top of the sides. And then my next section, I'm going to leave out. So I'm going to take a very thin section through here and Cassie, got a bit excited, chopped myself. Can you get me a band-aid? Thanks. So my second section, I'm going to leave out. So the first section, I cut from short to long from the crown. 
This is my second section and I'm going to just leave that out and put a clip in it through there. My third section, I'm going to cut. So I'm going to cut every other section, pivoting around. And then my next section, I can start changing the length and also the angles if I want to. So this is my third section. Number one I cut, number two I didn't cut, this is number three. I don't need to get my guideline from my first one because I'm just playing with it, I'm just designing as I go along. My connection point is from the crown, so I know as long as I connect to that crown, it doesn't matter if this angle is slightly different, it doesn't matter if this length is slightly different, I want a textured look. That is my fourth section. I'm going to move it out of the way and leave it out. So I'm not going to cut that one. So number one was cut. Number two was not. Number three was cut. Number four was not. I'm on number five now. Again, my guide, as it were, is from the crown. And I'm going to cut from short to long. And go from there. The pieces that I've left out and haven't cut, I'm going to be cutting as if I was cross-checking it afterwards. Christopher Solomay says hi. Oh, hi. Wow, there's some great people on here today. So that's my next one. I've forgotten what number that is. That was five. I okay, remember. so that was five. Number five, I haven't cut. Now I'm on number six. So I'll turn around so you guys can see it. This is my guide from my crown. You've got to keep recombing, it's a lot of hair to deal with. So keep recombing and getting higher. So. George Gabrielle says, nice seeing you, Sally. Oh, hi. Is that Jorge? Hi, yeah. Oh, so nice to hear that voice. Not that voice, but that name. Hope to see you soon. One of my first customers when I left so soon came to one of my first, very first SR education classes. That's about seven years ago. So thank you to everyone who has ever come to either our classes um, or our hair show as well. We have a hair show called Thrive. So I appreciate all of you. Now I'm going to take this clip out and I'm going to show you where I'm at. So now I have this kind of really nice grown out textured look through here. The hair that hasn't been cut at all, I'm now going to come back through and go almost as if you were cross-checking it, right? I'm gonna take horizontal diagonal sections across the top, bring this hair up. Now you're gonna see the short hair and these are the longer hairs that have not been cut at all. So now I'm gonna take that to a new length and cut that short to long. We have a question about your elevation when you were doing the channeling. Yes. That's from Oscar Valencia. He wants to know if you're straight up 90 degrees from your yes. section. Yeah, you don't need to over direct it because you want to just keep it on, on the section because it has no relationship to anything else. It's just a, a freestanding alone section. But yes, great question, thank you. And channels can be done in so many ways. They can be done vertically, diagonal, horizontal, curly hair, straight hair. You can really go to town with them. They're a great way to add texture by still working uh, in a precision manner. I love soft haircuts. I'm not all about it being super, super angular. I mean, I like that too, but I do like really soft haircuts. But my um, fascination is to create softer haircuts with precision cutting so that it still grows out the same. I definitely do do freehand, but I like the challenge of doing soft hair in more precision manner. 
Jorge said he cannot wait for you to bring Thrive back to Vegas. Oh my God, yeah, let's do Thrive again. I was just talking about it with uh, Julia, one of my students. And um, the last Thrive that we had was here actually in downtown Phoenix in January. We just got it in before we all got to um, lockdown, right? So it was so much fun. It was just such a great community spirit. We had so many great artists there. I was thinking about trying to do one next year, a small, just a small version. We'll see. Oscar Valencia asks um, if you were over directing in the previous part. In the top part? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, my top area, I went horizontal diagonal on the sections, and then I ignored my first guideline from my vertical ones, and I went past it, I went short to long. And then I did over direct it back a little bit because I wanted to keep some length through here. I am going to, you know, do some freehand and stuff through here. So I wanted to leave some length. But you can, you know, not over direct if you want to remove more weight. Okay, she's looking good. I want this to look a bit grungy. We did a little bit of color in here. I did some. Um, you know, I just did some pieces. I just picked up some pieces, bleached them out. And I'm just really into this kind of, um, I don't know, a slightly washed out looking kind of color at the minute, just faded and into like homegrown kind of color. So, you know, we put a little bit of uh, a pale blue on there. There's a little bit of pink in there, but it's just very uh, grungy and grown out. We have a question from Manuel Luna. He says, yeah. does channeling make it more versatile to style? Um, so does channeling make it more versatile to style? It, it does in a way because it removes some um, weight and density. Um, so yes, it definitely does. It means that you can play around with it a lot. Because I've got all these different layers in here, I'll show you when I lift it up. You can really, you can really um, play around a lot with the styling. So for example, she could kind of dress this out and have a lot of texture and pieciness. It looks really good back as well. You can tuck it behind the ear. You get all of this amazing texture. It could be one side to side. You still have to think about that short hair pushes long hair. So that's the big key, I would say, to this, is that short hair pushes long hair and then Um, so therefore you have to think about what direction you're putting it in. So I'm actually using a uh, professional by Fama, who's a, an amazing Italian company I work with. This is a primer, nourishing mousse. So it's a bit like a leave-in conditioner, but uh, more of a mousse. I want more of a dry, kind of grungy texture to it. So. That's why I'm just kind of applying it with my hands a little bit rawer. And then I'll put some more product in there to kind of take some of the frizz out. We have a couple of questions. We have one from Christopher. He wants to know if it matters where her part is. Very good question. Um, the way that I cut it, it doesn't. Um, and also I've kind of looked at how I'm going to style it and how she styles it. If you were doing it from a parting, so if I was, if somebody wore their hair from a parting, then instead of doing that triangle, just pivoting, I would have put my first section in over the parting and then I would have over directed everything to that parting. Great question. Thank you everyone. I'm putting in a little bit of the Creator Modeling Fluid. Again, this is a Professional by Fama product. So I'm putting this in over the top. And then to me, the biggest thing is, is to always comb your products through so you can seal the cuticle and get a really nice finish on there. We have one more question. What do you do when your client comes back to have their style trim up? What do I do on my day off? Is that what you said? 
<laughs> what do you do when your client comes back to have their style okay trained this up? is the age-old question is a very important question and uh, thank you guys for asking it what do you do with this haircut when a client comes back uh, especially if you want to replicate it people get really worried about this connection and they're like how will i ever be able to get that back again it is so easy when you work with this connection if you do it in a planned organized manner with organized sections because all you do is you simply lift the hair up so what i'll do here is okay i want to uh, take the same section that I made, uh, like I'm doing a ponytail, right? So all I do is just pick that hair up in my hands, shake it out, and then it shows me the section. So I just put my section back in really easily, just by shaking that hair out, and then bang, I've got my top section back in. Do the same thing here, just pick it up this way, and you can see easily, I can just put my sections back in. So just imagine that you were doing a ponytail and you were just picking the hair up and just shake that hair that's shorter underneath out. And then you just find your sections again. If you're disconnecting in a haphazard way, and what that means is, to me, a haphazard way of hair cutting is sometimes fun. Right? Sometimes I just want to see where it's going. I just want to see what's going to happen. Let's see how this hair turns out. That's fun at the time, but it's extremely difficult to replicate afterwards. So, we have a couple more questions. Being organized is the key thing. I just messed up my section. Hold on. Okay. We have one from Manuel. He wants to know if the disconnection in the back is personal preference or. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, some people never disconnect hair. Some people don't agree with disconnecting hair. Some people don't like it at all. So nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, there's, what do we say? There's a lid for every pot. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like disconnecting hair, you don't do it. If you like to work with a razor, you do that. I love working with a razor. I enjoy and encourage and appreciate all ways of cutting hair. I think there's no right or wrong. If you want to cut it with an axe or a flamethrower that's on you, you do what you want. This is what I do. I prefer a more organized disconnection. Um, if I had someone with fine hair or was doing something more classic, I might not disconnect at all. Disconnection is good in a more creative outlet and also to remove weight. Very good question. Thank you so much. What were the other ones? I'm gonna just dry really quickly. I'm gonna dry the underneath real fast. The last one that we had was from someone who joined a little bit late. They wanted you to recap your technique. Okay. So um, thank you for joining. For anyone that's joined late, we're doing three panels of layering. My underneath through here is shorter. My second panel is here. Uh, we've disconnected it and it's falling over the top. And then my top area is a triangle and we channeled it. I'm just gonna dry this underneath first and start to freehand it. Then I'll do my top, okay? So I'm gonna turn my dryer on. I'll be as quick as I can. I'm just using my um, SR Education. This is YS Park. I love this comb. I blow dry with it quite often if I want to keep the density down. If I put a brush in, it's going to poof out. So I like to do it with my fingers or a comb.
Okay, so now I'm going to go through and start to freehand all of this underneath before I go into the top area. You could dry it all though if you wanted to, no big deal, whatever you feel like is the right thing for you. Uh, I'm going to go through and just start to point into the hair and also work with some freehand on the outline. I'm super into things being a bit more raw at the moment, but if I look at this from the profile, you can see it's too wide. I want to bring out the eye and also the cheekbone, so I'm going to start to take some hair away from that front area to start with. This will make that smaller and also open up that cheekbone. All we've got to show right now is our eyes, the top of our cheekbones, so we can't be covering them up, right? Because that's everything. Right. I'm going to come through now and just start to use the tips of my scissors and take a little bit of this density out using a slicing technique. And I'm just opening and closing my scissors very, 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 very small amount. So it's like I'm stroking the hair. Make sure nobody who's very excitable is going past you or bumps you. You need like the hair caution tape on around you when you're in the salon doing this. We have some people in the comments that are talking about how this would look great as a mullet as well. Yes, 100%. You could leave this back area a lot longer. And this is a technique that I would 100% use for a mullet um, or a very short shag, you know, that kind of thing. It's good for clients, you know, with really thick hair that want that mullet. But if it's all fully connected, it looks too much like a real mullet. This gives you an opportunity to slim it down. So I'm going to work around the mask as well, obviously. I'm going to remove a little bit of this weight. I like to see how the hair falls around the ear. So you can see how that splits naturally. So look at that and then I'm just going to go in and slice out, take out a little bit of density through there. So I'm pushing that hair forward and just stopping it from clumping together. Just trying to slim it out. I'm just touching it, seeing where it breaks naturally and working with it. Sometimes I'll even cut some short little bits in there so it pushes it around a bit more. Now again, I kind of like this fringy stuff at the bottom, but I can go in and adjust it so I can keep it all soft and piecey and loose. But also, you know, I can bang in a really hard, clean outline, which may yet happen. We'll see how I feel as we go along. But it's, you know, choice, isn't it, right? It's up to you. So again, I'm just going to stroke the surface of that hair with my tips of my scissors. All this does is just softens it a little bit, stops it being so solid i'm trying to blend that in this is completely disconnected this has a huge disconnection on it through here so my short hair is there right but my intention is to stop it from looking really visually disconnected and that's why this works sometimes on clients with dense hair because maybe a client wouldn't normally have a disconnection but if you can make it look like it's blending in then you can use the disconnection to um, solve their problems and maybe their problem is too much density. But you can see I'm still keeping my cutting lines. I'm just pointing in, slimming it down, taking some of that weight out. There's a lot of hair coming out of here, but she still has a lot of hair still. This angle that you're seeing here is my cutting angle from my middle panel. I'm really into this kind of strawberry color. We actually worked with um, a, her natural color. And then we also worked with Professional by Fama Lightner, which is an amazing color line from Italy that I work with. And then I also put like a pink toned uh, semi-permanent over her natural color so all we did is bring out that strawberry blonde kind of quality sometimes I really like having natural hair in the mix we don't have to color all of the hair 
And for those of you that know me, you know me as a cutter more than anything, but I love color. So I've been doing a lot of color recently. I'm very excited about it. Daniel Maltoni said, at the end of COVID, they'll give us an Oscar for cutting hair with the mask. Oh yeah. I mean, I've got to be honest. I know masks are a pain and all of that kind of stuff, but you know, I used to go to Japan a lot and I used to travel a lot and teach in Japan a lot. And um, you know, I've always just really respected the way that people wear masks to, you know, respect others. And that's always been something I admired. So it doesn't really bother me that much. You definitely have to shout. I think at the end of all of this, we'll all just be shouting at each other because that's how we have to be right now. But I'm kind of loud anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. I don't know if I'm taking this mask off Colton, to be honest. <laughs> I've got to be totally honest with you. I'm quite into the idea of keeping my germs to myself and you keep your germs to yourself. <laughs> Especially on a plane. I used to fly every single weekend for years doing classes all over the country and uh, it seems crazy to me now to be traveling that much. Maria says she loves this cap. Oh, thank you, Maria. I appreciate that. I shouldn't have said that because I've got a lot of requests for Intel and seminars recently. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not so interested in flying everywhere, I've got to be honest. I'll drive. If you're close enough to me to drive, I'll come there. I'll come to you, that one. So it's up to you what you do with the outlines. Like I said before, everyone has their own feel, everyone has their own vibe, but that's up to you. You know, I'm not ever teaching people to just be mini memes, mini versions of what I do. I just teach people how to cut hair and you do what you want with it. I think it's important to have your own style. You don't always just have to follow what everybody else is doing. You can get your iPhone, get some models together and do a photo shoot, you know? You can lead the pack. Tom Harness says, great technique. Thank you very much, Tom. So with your outlines, it's important to not end up <clears throat> making them all too perfect. I think keeping a raw edge to it is the key thing, which sometimes can be difficult for us because we keep going back for more. And before we know it, we've got like a, a line in it. All right, so you can see now all of that cool texture that's in there, which I really love. I love that editorial kind of messed up kind of texture quality in there. You can see all of my little bits and pieces coming through now. See all of that texture coming. And you can see the color working. Now I'm gonna put the top area down. I'm gonna dry this with a bit more of a wrap dry, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing and then do my finishing. So again, I apologize for not talking for a minute. I'm sure you're happy to have a bit of quiet for a second. I'm going to put in the same products as I did on the side. These are by Professional by Fellow. This one is really nice. It gives me quite a dry feeling. That's the primer. It's like a dry leave-in conditioner. And then I'm doing the Creator. I use this on all of my blow dryers, to be honest. Put that over then, I'm going to comb it through. I think that's the most important thing when you're drying hair that has a tendency to be a little bit frizzy. You have to be super careful to seal that cuticle, comb it through. And then I'm going to just do a quick wrap dry on the top. I might even iron it, we'll see. Where we get to, I haven't finished yet. Uh, I'm just going to use my SR Education Vest Brush.
Colton, can you check what that iron's on for me, please? 400 is fine. Cassie Smith says she likes the haircuts. She loves it. <laughs> well, thank you, Cassie. Uh, I'm going to go through with an iron really quickly, and then we're going to do all of our finishing work. Super shiny from those products. Again, obviously, it's not finished. Often I'll put some texture back into it afterwards, but for you guys to be able to see my technique, I'm just going to do a little iron. We have another question about um, density and suitability with yeah. this haircut. Yeah. He just wants to know if this is a haircut that would work on someone with fine hair. No, absolutely. For me, not. I would not do this kind of haircut on fine hair. It'll end up looking a bit too stringy. And this haircut is what is like an ultimate weight removal. So if you do um, if you do do this on fine hair, you're going to probably take too much weight out, in my opinion. Also, even sometimes really high with blonde hair, even if it's thick, if you've got a bleach, or, bleach and toner on it or something, sometimes that can not look good because it can look a bit thin. and bulky you know that's just where we're at in the haircut I've got my initial shape in now I'm going to do my finishing work okay so uh, I'm just going to go in some slicing and I'm going to do what I would refer to as more directional slicing so directional slicing to me is all about 
um, as if you were, wh whatever you're doing with your section um, is the same as the direction of your scissors. So for example, if I was going with diagonal sections here, then the hair would push in the direction of the section. So it's the same concept with my slicing. If I want the hair to push across this way, then I need to be opening and closing my scissors and pushing diagonally with my scissors across in that direction to allow me to push that hair across to the side, but also lighten it and loosen it. If you don't want to go on the skin as well, then you know you can lift the hair up. The more you lift the hair up, the more weight you're going to remove, just like as if you were layering. The more you keep the hair down, the more weight you're going to keep. So, um, you know, it's just the same as, as if you were doing precision hair cutting. I'm also going to point very randomly into this top area. I like the idea and the concept of it being a bit more random, just the ends need softening because the hair is blonde, so it goes a bit sharp on the edges. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. There's a lot of different channels in here, and now it's really just a case of bringing it all together. From the side, you can see how it's laying over the top. It doesn't look really disconnected, it just looks nice and textured. Um, so it's really just a case of deciding, do I want this piece here or not? I'm going to open it up a little bit more. I'm so sorry, Jaden, you're covered in hair. It must be driving you mad. You're doing such a good job. So sometimes I'll keep this length. I've got short underneath. I've got long over the top. This allows her to cover, but also she can open up by putting her hair behind the ear. So you can see it has big disconnections on it, but because of the hair color and texture it visually blends in pretty well as well we got uh, ronnie says looks great sally hair brains looking great sally and then daniel thank looks you amazing. Hmm? and then daniel says looks amazing thank you and then rita says love this so many styling opportunities with yeah. this cut so many things you can do as well for a client that can really tuck it behind the ear and stuff I'm going to be back soon on Hairbrained. Um, I actually work with an amazing uh, software company and booking system called Aura Salon Software. So I'm going to be back on Hairbrained, Hairbrained um, doing something with them soon. But uh, if any of you are interested in looking at a new company for your online booking, that's what we actually use in the school as well, is Aura software. And uh, it's super amazing, I can't wait. Our students are about to go into taking their first clients and I want to teach them, you know, the modern way of doing business. And that is all online booking for us, for all of our clients that come into the school. And, you know, letting the students as well figure out how to work with those kinds of systems too. Herbane says, thank you for your time today, Sally. Thank you very much for having me. That was maybe a sign I've got to get off, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, over, we're over our hour. Okay, everyone. Nearly there. Just Daniel sorry. said he's going to eat his carbonara. Stay safe. Okay, thank you. So, oh, and that sounds good, actually. Yes, I'm hungry too. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put some product in and uh, we'll do some finishing. But I like how it's coming out and uh, thank you all very much again for joining us. We have a question yes. from Manuel Luna who said, would you have a disconnection line if the client wanted, uh, wanted a low skin fade? Um, I think, I mean, I would, I would disconnect the top. It would, this haircut, for example, would look amazing with uh, a skin fade like down here, like underneath, and then add a disconnection over the top. Absolutely, I love that look on anyone, doesn't matter. To me, haircutting is not really male or female anymore. It's, it's about the individual, you know? So, yes, 100%. Just putting some product in here, working it in. 
Again, I never care what it looks like right now, then I'm just gonna use my fingers to put it in how I want it. So you can see I can style it in lots of different ways. Just using your hands, getting in there, using your fingers just to kind of rub that hair to get some texture in there. Can I take this off? <laughs> All right, so, Alright, so just stand up for me and I'll style it for you so that was easy. Just stand here for me. There you go. Just do the stand. So all I'm doing is using a little bit of a finishing product. Getting some texture in there with my fingers. recap you can see in this back area I have a lot of different textures in there and this is because I've put three panels of layering in there three panels of disconnection this first panel underneath here you can see is shorter short to long then I put my next panel over the top and then I put that triangle over the top lots of different opportunities to style it in different ways. It can work both sides. Michael Lane says it looks awesome. Thank hey, you Mike. Michael Lane. Hey Michael. Wish you were here. Um, okay so that's us. My name is Sally Rogerson and I have a company called SR Education and we're here also at the SR Academy and thank you so much to Hairbrain for allowing us to come on and cut hair. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us. If you're watching it afterwards as well, um, then I hope you enjoy it. And if you are interested in any classes or have any questions for us, we do teach a cosmetology program, a six week program, and also two day advanced classes. You can um, DM us anytime or go over to at Sally Rogerson on Instagram to see a bit more of what we do. But thank you all so much. Have a great day. And uh, bye, thank you so much.